This is the plaintiff, Alyssa Rose. She says she purchased a hunk of junk 2003 Volkswagen from the defendant. And the guy should go to jail because she could have been killed in the thing. The engine basically fell out of the car due to rusted motor mounts. The thing's useless to her. The defendant refuses to return her money or honor a warranty because he's a dealer who has 20 cars listed for sale on the internet. And she's suing him here and now for the $1,858 he basically stole from her. This is the defendant, Vince Russo. He says he was a car dealer for 57 years, and he sold the plaintiff a car with an implied warranty, which covers seven days from the time of sale because the car had over 125,000 miles on it. One month after the sale, the plaintiff demanded her money back after driving it around for a month, doing who knows what with it. He's in Walmart, he doesn't take returns, and owes her nothing. He's accused of unloading a flawed auto. All parties, please take your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a car from the defendant and says when she was driving, the engine fell out. She almost got killed. The defendant saying, hey, I've been selling cars for 57 years. I would never put anybody in danger like that. It's the case of hoop de doo Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, Ms. Rose, talk to me. What happened? I had been looking for a vehicle. Um, I found the Jetta on the Facebook Marketplace, and my dad and I had actually gone to see it. I met with his stepdaughter, I believe, at his residence, and then um, she had us follow her to a different location. There were several cars there, and um, when we went to go look at the Jetta, I wasn't able to test drive it. They didn't have um, any plates for it. So I did purchase it from them, and that day it has. Why would you out. buy? Wait, 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 wait. Let's slow down. Let's slow our roll. Why would you purchase a car that you had not even test driven? Why would you do that? I was honestly just looking for a car, and it seemed like it was in good condition. Um, as soon as I by what it, in your I'll... vast experience of looking at a pretty color? I mean, the whole thing you're buying is the transportation part. And why would you want to buy a car where you didn't even test drive it? That's just, that seems so unwise. You realize that now, right? Yes, I do. And I do honestly I hope so. not even test driving it. Um, but my dad looked at yeah. it and he does know a little bit about vehicles. If your dad knew something about vehicles, he wouldn't have let you buy the car without test driving it. Let's just you know, establish that, but go ahead. I bought it. Um, I had driven it um, almost to my house. And it had stalled out a couple of times on me, so I had contacted him, and he told me to bring it to his mechanic. All the mechanic told me to do was put new gas in it, and as soon as I brought it to my mechanic, he told me that the transmission um, was going to go on it. It was no good. It was the same day that I had purchased the vehicle, and both me and my father had tried to contact him, telling him that I wanted to bring it back, that I didn't even want it on the first day, and I got no response. And I'm sorry, hold on one second. So you texted him on the first day and told him that you wanted to return it. And where are those texts? Because I didn't see a text on the first day. Because I do see you talking about the trunk being a problem, that you couldn't open the trunk on October 30th. I don't see you saying, I want to return this car. It doesn't drive well. There's a transmission problem. All the things you just said, you said, you don't say them until a month later in the text. My father, my father had um, the conversation with him about that, I believe. So there are no texts that say that. You don't have any proof of that. I mean, if I could look on my phone right now, I could double check. I just purchased a new phone and changed my number, so I wouldn't have any text messages from that. No, you sent us lo loads of text messages. It's just that what I've read, and I've read them all very carefully, isn't what you are saying was communicated. The only thing you said on October 30th was the trunk problem. He didn't answer you until November 5th, and he said, listen, this is a, you know, a trunk problem is a minor thing, and it's on you, it's not on me. Um, oh, and by I the way, in that text of, just a second, that text of October 30th, when you're complaining about a trunk not opening, you never once mentioned, and the car stalled twice. That's not in that text. I had sent him a message. Um, my father had contacted him, and he told him. To so let's see the text mechanic. from your father. Or is your father here as a witness? Um, my father's in the other room. I can see if he would like to come and be a witness. 
Well, let's see if it's necessary. Keep telling me what happens. You keep driving the car and what happens? On November 27th, I was driving and my hood started smoking and I had pulled over and I was um, going to get a tow. I was trying to pull it into a parking lot and all of a sudden everything just dropped to the ground. I couldn't move my vehicle. Um, I had towed it to my mechanic on the 27th of November and um, he told me that the driver's side axle broke, the motor mount broke, and the bolts on the engine and the transmission were out of position due to a broken motor mount and transmission mount, and the positive battery for um, my starter broke. Okay. And um, So you want Mr. Russo to return the money that you paid him for the car, the 1500 plus you want the money for the registration fees and the money for the tow. Yes, correct. Correct? All right, yes. and let me hear from you, Mr. Russo. Well, what she says is partially true. We sold her the vehicle on uh, October we? 30th. Myself and Leah, who is a person who helps me. I have trouble with motivation. I can't walk so well, so I need people to help me. Uh, where were we? You tell me. You sold her the vehicle. and Sold her the vehicle. So she was shown the vehicle first a couple of days after that, she came back and she paid for it. That was on October 30th. When she came, she came to my home with her grandmother with a pickup truck. That time I said to her, can I give you a couple screws for your number plate? And she says, no, I'm going to take the front plate off my grandmother's truck and I'm going to put it on there. That's not true. I heard from her that very same day after she took the vehicle. She told me it wasn't running properly. I sent her oh, to Oh, she did. Okay. Well, there you go. He admits it. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, she yeah, told you it, it wasn't running properly? Correct. I sent her to my mechanic. The mechanic told her it was bad gas. That was the issue. What's bad gas? Old? Well, sometimes gas is old in the car or something like that. You know, sometimes car sitting gets water in the gas system. But anyway, that re she rectified that problem. The next time I heard from her was she had a problem getting in the trunk of the car, which I think, as you can see, I answered that. This isn't, you know, a con really a concern of mine. She knows she bought the car with no express warranty. Anything over in Massachusetts, over 125,000 miles, has no express warranty. She has seven days to get this car inspected. If she receives a good inspection, then that declares the car merchantable. If she fails inspection, she, it's her job to notify me. She never notified me. So as far as I'm concerned, she never got an inspection at that time. And she has seven days to do that. That is the law. I mean, I have to abide right. by the law. Everybody has to abide by the law. Ms. Rose, let me ask you a question. You feel that Mr. Russo should return your money because the car is a lemon, but he only has to return your money if he violated a warranty that he gave you. Whether he's a car dealer or an independent person makes no difference. If a car is over 125,000 miles, there is no requirement for even a car dealer to make an express warranty on the car. But you hail from the great state of Massachusetts which has a really consumer-friendly law. And that law allows you to take any car you buy from anybody to inspection. And if it fails the inspection, within seven days of purchase, no questions asked, you get your money back. It's awesome. And a couple of other states have that law. And it's, it's great because there's just no questions asked, right? Did you take the car to get inspected? I did take it to get inspected. Um, my mechanic told when me When did that you take it to get inspect? No, 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 no. I mean a formal state of Massachusetts inspection. Did you take the car to be inspected? Not that you have your mechanic look at it. Those are two different things. Show no, me I did have the failure of the inspection. Show me the failure. There's a form that gets filled out. It fails. Show it to me. I don't have it on me. Um, I wasn't able to get in touch with my mechanic to get 
the um, couple of things that I needed due to the coronavirus. Um, he's been sick. Um, but I did take... You should have that anyway. But I don't think... I think you just brought it to your mechanic. I don't think it failed inspection. You would have mentioned that by now if, it, if you had a formal state of he, Massachusetts inspection conducted and it had failed inspection. I don't know that he's certified to do the inspections. He may not be. He's just your mechanic. I do know that as a mechanic, he should probably have told you, hey, lady, go take this to an uh, inspection. And, you know, if it fails, it fails. Because uh, he should probably know that. He's probably seen this a million times. I didn't get a sticker for it because I didn't have the extra money to get the sticker because I was already paying off what I had to borrow for the vehicle. And then what I had to pay... I'm not understanding a word you're fix. saying because none of it is making any sense. Welcome back to the People's Court. The plaintiff is saying she took the car for an inspection and it did not pass. It flunked. But the defendant saying baloney. He doesn't believe she took it because if she did, it would have passed. Let's go back into the courtroom. Let me explain to you how it works. You pay 30 bucks, you get a form that says it failed. And the law requires you to hustle after that. You've got between day seven and day 14 to alert him that there was a failed inspection and demand your money back. None of that happened in this case, so I don't think you had a failed inspection. So even though I feel sorry for you for the circumstances that you're in, that it ends up being that you ended up buying a car that you can't afford the repairs on, it's a car with 146,000 miles, and there is no warranty, and you did not avail yourself of the failure. You can't come to court and say, hey, somebody told me it was going to fail. You actually have to go through the motions and get it inspected. If it passes, you're out of luck, and if it fails, then you know, you take that and you send it to him and you have from day seven to day 14 to demand your money back. None of that stuff happened. There's just no excuse for someone in Massachusetts not understanding this law because it's been around forever to protect you. And when you're, if you're going to buy a car, you know, educate yourself on your rights and obligations. Um, you know, I feel bad that you had all these people around you who know cars a little better and they didn't educate you on it. But you can't just say, ah, he told me it was going to fail. That's not how it works, okay? So I'm sorry that you're in this position, but I find in this case in favor of Mr. Russo. That is my judgment. So it didn't work out for the plaintiff. She's not going to get her money back. Ms. Rose, let me ask you a quick question here. Your dad went with you to look at the car. Didn't he caution you about waiting and drive test driving it before buying it? Um, he did. Uh, unfortunately, at the time, I was out of a vehicle, and I was going to lose um, my job pretty much if I didn't have a vehicle to get there. So we bought it, and I was hoping that he would have taken it back the day that I had contacted him, but he didn't. So. Well, you learned a really tough lesson the hard way. I feel very sorry for you, but as you heard the judge, you know, you had many options. You just didn't take, take advantage of them. Sorry about it. You lose. Let's talk to Mr. Russo. I, Mr. Russo, do you feel sorry for her? I mean, that's kind of I a do. tough lesson for her. I do. It was a tough lesson for her, but, you know, uh, she should have been aware of that. I, obviously, she didn't have the car registered. That's why she didn't uh, go for an inspection sticker. All right, sir. Well, you won this one. Congratulations. All righty. Thank you. And that'll wrap it up for this case. Let us join uh, Judge Millian and her husband, a real judge, Judge John, for more after the verdict. Watching you listen to this case and listen to the testimony, it kept going through my head. How can somebody buy a car without test driving the car? <laughs> And speaking as someone who has owned a few thousand dollar cars, <laughs> sold a thousand dollar car during our marriage. Oh, yeah. When we first met, you had a thousand dollar car. Chevy, I sold for a yeah, thousand. That was a great car, by the way. Well, I, I'll bet it's still running. Your brother's still mad at you because he gave you that car. He is. But the guy who bought that one, in fact, didn't test drive it. I was at your, mother, your mother's house in the dark, and he came. Somebody dropped him off. He walked up. He looked at the car. He had me start it, and he just started counting out money on the front hood. He said, <laughs> does it run well he, to, in Spanish? And I said, yeah, it runs great. And he just got in it and drove off. And I'll bet you that car's still running. Yeah, that was a great car. Well, let's but face it. You're kind you, of a, You can't buy a pig in a poke like that. You no. really have to test drive a car. But most, you know, what kills me about people in the state of Massachusetts, because I've been saying that if they just watch the people's court, they'd know the law. Right. And they would know that they they have their seven days to go ahead and get the car inspected. And if it fails, it fails. And that's it. They get their money back. It would be awesome, you and know, if people just follow that. Right. If they follow that protocol, they have some protection and they don't have to Because fight. typically most states don't have that. So you buy a used car, you bought a used car. That's it. 
So I tell people all the time, you shouldn't even buy a used car until you have it seen by a mechanic. But nobody wants to buy a thousand something dollar car and spend a hundred dollars on a mechanic to take right. a look at it. The reason you're looking at the thousand dollar cars because you don't have the hundred dollars to pay bucks. the mechanic. But exactly. for the love of all that's holy, at least test drive it. Exactly. I mean, what are you going to do? Kick the tires and say sold, you know, and and then and you know and then complain? I mean. And there you have it. The return of the Jetta. Right? <laughs> the non-return of the Jetta. All right. Bradley, this is a great question because a lot of people assume as soon as there's a dispute, what you do is you go to court. That should be the last resort. The best thing to do is you sit down with the person and you say, look, we have an honest disagreement here. Let's go over it, figure out who's right and who's wrong and see if you can work it out. And I'll tell you one other thing. It's not a bad idea maybe to concede a point or two to the other person to make them feel like you're listening. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.